Optimus Prime is the fifth entry into this brand new Takara Tomy and Hasbro Partnership Studio Series line. He is the first Voyager to be released for this new line and is based on his appearance from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. The packaging is very similar to that of the deluxe classes. We have a very nice concept image of the character, Optimus Prime Studio Series, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Takara Tomy and Hasbro. The side of the box has a larger image of the character's concept art. The back of the packaging showcases the figure in both his robot mode as well as his truck mode. It says that he transforms into 35 steps. Optimus Prime fiercely takes on Decepticons, risking it all for freedom is the bio that we get. He is from the forest fight, he does come with the backdrop, and he is big screen inspired. On the bottom of the packaging we've got some deluxes as well as his wavemate Starscream. And then finally, the other side of the box shows a closer up image of the head design of Optimus Studio Series and that he is figure number five. As with all these Studio Series figures, he does come with a backdrop, as this is Optimus Prime based on his forest battle appearance from the second movie. We do have a nice diorama of that forest that we see him, Megatron, Starscream and Grinder all fighting. It has been replicated extremely well and does definitely look very authentic to that forest that we see him fight in the movie. This Optimus Prime is a completely brand new mold and is based upon his appearance from the second Transformers movie. He has been detailed impeccably well with a very very well done head sculpt with some fairly nice paint applications applied to it. We have got some silver smokestacks we can make out the chest section. Unfortunately we do have these ugly black hinges in the middle of the chest however in hand it's not as obtrusive as it is in pictures. Got some very nice detailing in the torso section as well as the lower crutch section. The fires have all been detailed appropriately and are fairly nice. We've also got some nice detailing on the shins. The forearms have been detailed fairly well as well. They're not too detailed, however, they do have enough in order to make the figure appear to be substantial. Turning the figure around, we do have some form of a backpack, however, it's definitely not that bad in hand whatsoever. I would have preferred it if perhaps you could have folded this section back once more so you just had this one panel here. However, in hand it really doesn't look that bad whatsoever and overall details and paint on this figure are not too bad. If I had one gripe it would be that the colours are fairly dark making this figure fairly muted on the shelf. It would have been nice if they would have included some more vibrant colours, perhaps a lighter shade of red and blue and definitely a lighter grey colour for the head and upper parts of the body. But overall, for our detail and paint applications, it's pretty nice. Turning to articulation, the figure's head is on a ball joint. It can look up and down as well as side to side. It can also swivel left to right. He does have rotation joints at the arms, allowing you to move them 360. The panel at the top is move, can be moved upwards, allowing you to hinge the arm out to a very wide degree. He does have bicep articulation, so you can swivel it there. His elbows do bend at 90 degrees as well and there is surprisingly some wrist articulation. Due to transformation the figure can articulate at the waist which definitely helps when posing the figure. The legs can kick forwards that far and they can kick back quite far as well. They can also hinge out and there is a swivel at the thigh and the wheels on the back do not hinder the articulation at all. There is a knee joint which does allow you to bend it further than 90 degrees and the knee pads are articulated appropriately. The feet can pivot forwards all the way and also up all the way. They can also pivot in and out to allow for some more dynamic posing. Overall, articulation is fantastic. Turning to accessories, as this is Optimus based from his forest fight, he does come with two of these Energon swords that we see him use multiple times throughout all of the Transformers movies. They are detailed fairly nicely and you do have some Cybertronian hieroglyphs at the end. They are both exactly the same. You've got some nice gunmetal grey over the top of the blade with an orange translucent piece to really give it that Energon look. It does have ports on either of them that will plug into the 5mm ports on his hands. They do just slide in fairly nicely and they do definitely give you that look that he does have blades. From the outside it doesn't look like he's holding them whatsoever. It doesn't necessarily look like he's holding them from any point of view, which I definitely am a fan of. If you do wish to store these in the robot mode, there are some ports on the back, which these tabs here will just slot into. However, you will have to move the gas canisters out of the way as they do drape along the back fairly well. And I think that that's still quite a nice incorporation of weapon storage. For a size comparison, here is Optimus Prime next to his Wavemate Starscream, as well as the first wave of Deluxes. As you can see, he is considerably shorter than Starscream, 
but however he is tall enough to be associated with the voyages as he does tower over all the deluxes. I do think the scale works quite well between Ratchet and Optimus, however I don't think the scale between Optimus and Bumblebee works too well, I do actually think Optimus should have been a tad larger. The scale between Starscream and Optimus, whilst it doesn't look natural, it is actually accurate to the movie, so I'm glad that Hasbro has incorporated scale into this line. For one final size comparison, here is Studio Series Optimus Prime compared next to the Age of Extinction Invasion mode and the brand new The Last Night Voyager Prime. As you can see, he's the shortest out of them all. However, he is in scale with the other Studio Series figures. So in this case, I think downscaling was definitely the right option for this particular figure. Overall for the robot mode, he is definitely a nice addition to this Studio Series line. It is nice to see some of those older character designs getting a refreshed look and a more modern update. Is this the best version of this Optimus we've ever seen? No. Is it the best Voyager Optimus that we've ever seen? It could possibly be. I do definitely like some elements in the robot mode. The only thing that is a major drawback for me is the black hinges in the middle of the chest as well as the dull paint applications. However, he is definitely a very fun transformer to mess around with and does definitely capture that look from Revenge of the Fallen exceptionally well. Now with all the major aspects of the robot mode covered, I'm now going to take you through the transformation and for a modern day Voyager class, this is an extremely involved transformation. It is approximately 35 steps and you do definitely feel as if though you are carrying out each of those 35 steps. He is an extremely complex transformation and it's definitely one that I think will be extremely familiar to movie fans. Firstly, you want to lift this section on either side of the robot mode. You then want to take this leg section down and bring it all the way down until it clips into this section here. With the same process applied to the other leg, you then want to push these sections in all the way, very reminiscent of the evasion mode Optimus Prime's leg transformation, and just clip them in so that the feet are flush against the shin sections like that. You then want to take this section and tab it in appropriately just so that you can seal legs tightly shut. Moving up to the arms, you actually want to rotate them around like that and lift these panels outwards all the way and fold the fists inwards. Repeat the exact same process on the other side. Once you've done that, you then want to take this section and bring it down so that the cab section is flush against the fist just like that. With both arms complete, you now want to take these sections here and just pull them away from them. They are on tabs that plug into these, you just want to separate them, but be fairly gentle as these sections do feel as if though they are brittle. And as they are clear plastic, I don't necessarily think the durability is great on them. You then want to take these pieces here and there are tabs here and here that will tab together. Not the securest connection, they are very likely to come undone. You then want to rotate the arms upwards in that position and begin to bring them down just like that. Before we do any more work on the arms, you want to take this entire section and rotate it all the way around. This will just allow for some more clearance when you pull those arms down and when you begin to transform the upper torso section. Now you can bring this section all the way down and there are some tabs here and here. These two will just completely sandwich together and will clip into place, creating a fairly secure connection. Once they're tabbed in, you can just line up the top half of the truck and you will have a fairly secure connection point. Now what you want to do is bend where the elbow sections would be all the way upwards, just making this piece here sit flush with where the window sections are going to become apparent. Now you want to come to the back section, lift this up slightly just so you can see what's going on, unpeg these pieces here, these are the grill, and then you want to rotate them around just like that. And now there is a little slot section that will tab into this section here. You just want to give it a firm push and it will all go in fairly well. With both of these sections now tabbed in, we can now bring the two grill sections together, just really firmly push them all together and you will secure the front half of the cap section. Coming to the back of the figure yet again, you want to pull out where these gas hubs are and just pull them all the way forwards which will then allow these flame panels to, to come out. You then want to bring the gas canisters all the way back and then this slot in there will tab into that tab there. Just push that in tightly, repeat the same process on the other side and we'll move on to the next step. With that complete, you would have now cleared out this entire section. Now you want to bring the head all the way down. In order to do this, you just want to rotate the head backwards and then you will create the entire front windshield of the truck 
lift this section up and those two tabs there will tab into those tabs at the top and they will just slot in fairly nicely. The next step is to bring these pieces backwards all the way and just to try and line them up with the flame pieces and with the top half of the cab section. Repeat the same process on the other side and we are good to move on to the next step. Now the next step of transformation is actually disconnecting this entire cab section from this crutch piece. It will just simply unpeg and you can bring this all the way up. Now in order to secure it, to stop it from flopping around, you need to bring these blue pieces all the way backwards, just like that, and then that will stop them from flopping around. You then want to bring these sections out, so just pull them out. There is a little hole there that will plug into the tab section there, bringing that up, and you will create one half of the cab nearly near enough fully complete. Repeat the same process on the other side. Now the final step is to really bring this section down. In order to do this I like to bend where the knee joints are, just allows for some more clearance and then you can bring this entire section downwards just like that. Now what you want to do is to swivel these panels around so that they do sit flush with the rest of the cab. There are a few tabs that you are going to need to line up in order for everything to appear fairly clean looking. With everything nicely lined up and the back section now put in, we are now going to move to the final step. There is a slot there that this tab here will do. So you just want to bring these gas canisters around and tap those firmly into place on both sides. Now with those gas canisters now plugged into place, we do have the completed truck mode. Now, as you can see, this is definitely supposed to be the Peterbilt semi-truck that Optimus Prime was throughout the first three Transformers live action movies. And it has been recreated in Voyager form fairly well. Now, out of the two modes, I do definitely believe that this is the weaker mode. The inclusion of the smaller smokestacks that are not able to be extended definitely do detract from the overall look of the truck mode. Another drawback is yet again, the lack of paint. There is not as many flame decals as I would have perhaps liked. Also, the gunman metal grey for the front of the truck doesn't look accurate whatsoever the truck in the movie was chrome so if they would have opted with a more silver paint and that definitely would have helped to amplify the look same goes for these visors pieces at the top but overall it's not a bad looking truck however it is considerably small and i would have liked it if they would have put some silver paint applications in the hubcaps of the wheels now before i begin to talk about size comparisons and weapon storage Another major drawback for me is that they've actually used these plug-on wheels. Now, as you can see, they're not on extremely tightly. There is a lot of leverage there with them, which doesn't allow for the truck to roll very smoothly at all. As you can see, it does tend to glide. I would have preferred it if they would have used pinned wheels, as I do find that they do roll a lot smoothly. However, I'm not going to be keeping it in its truck mode whatsoever, as I do think that it is considerably weaker than the overall robot. Turning to weapon storage, those same tabs that we saw in robot mode, you can plug them into the back sections of the truck, just like that, and the same supply for the other sword. It's not the best incorporation of weapon storage, however it is still nice that they did include some form of weapon storage. Now for size comparison, on the left I have the evasion mode Optimus Prime, and obviously on the right I have the studio series. Now the evasion Optimus is considerably taller than the new studio series truck mode. However, the studio truck mode is a tad longer. However, it does look considerably smaller when positioned next to this. And I do believe that is because of the height difference. The studio series one is considerably shorter than the evasion. Overall, this is a very nice Voyager class Optimus Prime. And it is definitely nice to see some of those older designs, especially the first trilogy Optimus Prime, given a new updated look. The transformation for this particular design is fairly new. There are definitely some new elements to this that we haven't yet previously seen before. I have seen people make the comparison between the evasion prime transformation as well as the first edition Optimus Prime. And yes, while there are some similarities, there is no mistaking that this is an entirely brand new transformation. It is nice to see that this particular design has been given a more updated look as we do have some new elements incorporated into it. However, it is not good enough to replace the likes of the original ROTF Leader Prime or the Masterpiece Optimus Prime. However, if you're just looking for a nice Voyager Optimus, this will definitely compensate for your need. I hope that you enjoyed this review. Please stay tuned for my next review of the Voyager class Starscream, and I'll see you in that review then. Thanks for watching.